Number one, Logan, I know I have them in my own tier. Say, and I believe so you do, do as well. Why are the Niners so clearly the best team in football again? Number one, Super Bowl front runners. Here's the Niners. Here's the gap. And then there's mm. everybody else. Like, mm. I know we got away from it for a couple of weeks because the Niners hit that skid, but yeah. it's everything, man. It's 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 everything. Offensively, they're the number three scoring offense. They are number one in terms of yards per play tied with Miami. Miami and San Francisco are the only two offenses in football above six yards per play, and they are a almost a full yard ahead. I mean, ridiculous. A full yard ahead of number three. This is the number one scoring defense. They're number five against the pass and number eight against the rush in terms of yards per attempt. And it's just like, I, I don't know, it's like we said with Baltimore, like I don't think they have any holes, but mm-hmm. with that, I mean, they just have the best weapons in the game and yeah i don't know i mean i've seen some niners fans kind of get pressed because it's so weird to me carson in this new age man we can't just disagree anymore there can't be a Mm. a gray area Mm. there's no gray area it's either Mm. black or white you're either and what i mean by this is you're either brock purdy is Mm -hmm. ass and he's fully uh He's just made by all of his weapons, or mm-hmm. Brock Purdy is the best quarterback in the game. Why aren't you giving him enough credit? Yeah. Uh, he's so much better than what everybody's saying. Well, again, I think the answer is in the healthy middle ground. I don't think it's either of these things are true. I do think Brock Purdy is playing better than people give him credit for. I don't think people give him enough credit, but when you watch these games, it's like, well, damn, man. Like, Brock's processing the game really well. He's really accurate. He makes really good decisions. He's on time. He doesn't get panicked. He's extremely calm. He also moves really well. He extends plays. Most of his plays, man, are he's making a good decision. And I'm not going to fault that because that's hard to do. You see Mitch Trubisky make bad decisions every Sunday. Every football game you watch him play. Yeah. There's a luxury in having a guy that makes good decisions. But Brock is, you know, for the most part, hitting checkdowns. He's hitting drags. He's hitting guys who are open. And then Debo's going to work. George Kittle's going to work. Ayuk's going to work. I wrote this down somewhere. I Oh, no, yeah, it's here. Debo is seventh in yards after the catch. Uh, uh, Kittle is 19th in yards after the catch. This is total on the year. Mm-hmm. Uh, this list that I got only extended to 25 names. But I guarantee if you look a little further down that list, Brandon Ayuk is somewhere on there. I think Christian, McCaffrey is 25. I, I was going to say, Christian McCaffrey is somewhere on that list. So... Brock Purdy is phenomenal. Uh, I did my rankings today when I did my uh, Mitch Trubisky video. If you guys want to check that out, I listed 96 quarterbacks. I take over Mitch Trubisky. The list actually probably goes to like 120 maybe. Oh, uh, settle down. Three. Settle down. Josh Rosen was on the list. Deshaun mm-hmm. Kaiser was yep. on the list. Yep. 44-year-old Josh McCown was on the list. 60-year-old Vinny Testaverde yeah. rounded out the list, man. There were some reaches there, pal. Kyle Trask? What has Kyle Trask done? Trey Lance? I don't know. I mean, they Settle can't be down. worse than Mitch Trubisky, man. They can. Uh, and it, most of them are. <laughs> At number eight, uh, I have Brock Purdy. And so, yeah, I think he's top ten. I think Brock does a lot of great mm. things. I think he extends plays. I think he makes good decisions. He's accurate. He's just not an upper echelon elevator. And that's okay. We don't have to treat Brock like he's that guy. But Brock's a very... We also don't have to treat Brock like he's made by his weapons solely. We yeah. can give Brock his credit where his credit is due. And we don't have to go over the top. I don't think he's the MVP. I don't think he's the best quarterback in football. I don't think he's played like that. But Brock is damn good for this team. And he doesn't limit them. Uh, and I trust Brock to be consistent enough on a game-to-game basis to where he doesn't hold this team back. So, I think you're absolutely right that there is a middle ground to be had with Brock Purdy. I personally don't think he should be MVP because I think if you look at a guy like Dak Prescott, he is doing more with less. He is leading an equally dominant team offense with weapons that aren't as elite as what the Niners have, with coaching that isn't as elite. I think he is making more impressive, really high-level throws. There's only one MVP. So to me, saying that Brock Purdy shouldn't be the MVP isn't some sort of disparaging, slanderous comment to make. The one thing that is starting to get on my nerves a little bit with the Purdy conversation, even though I agree that just because his statistical production might be that of the best quarterback in football, that doesn't mean that he is, is that 
everybody is holding him to such a high standard because of how great the Niners are that it's like nobody is judging him as a second year quarterback and everybody is judging him as MVP front runner. And they are saying, oh, he is not the reason that the Niners are great, which by the way, I agree with. He absolutely deserves credit because it's not just that he's accurate and that he's on time and super efficient as a passer, the things that you say. He's also relatively athletic, Mm -hmm. solid extending plays, and he's got big balls, dude. He's aggressive. He pushes the ball downfield, and sometimes that (laughs) leads to mistakes, but for the most part, it's been a positive for this team. So Brock Purdy is really good, but this Niners team is so absurdly stacked that you would have to say, well, yeah, being a top three defense in football, the number one scoring defense, well, that's probably more central to their success than Brock Purdy. And then having the best offensive coach combined with legitimately maybe the best collections of weapons that we've ever seen on one offense. I want to have that conversation with you later, Logan. That's probably two. And then Brock Purdy being a really good quarterback, being a top 10 kind of quarterback is number three. So he gets credit. Maybe he's not the driving factor, but in terms of a second year quarterback in his 18 starts, Logan, he has thrown for 4,751 yards, 36 touchdowns to nine interceptions with a 15 and three record. We were doing that trivia last week on guys with a passer rating of hundred plus through their first two seasons. And Brock Purdy was still out there on the board. And I was reading off his stats to you and you were like, who is this guy? He sounds like the goat. So I think if you look at that mm. pace, I mean, through, if that were just his rookie season and now he is into year two, but he didn't start for most of his rookie season, that would break the rookie passing yards record. That would break the rookie passing touchdown record. Only three quarterbacks ever have one MVP in their second season. That being Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, and Dan Marino. These just above and beyond all time sort of talents. So that's just what bums me out a little bit about Brock is that he's such a hot button topic and he's on (laughs) such a dominant team and his statistical production is so great that we can't just all acknowledge that he's good and he's exceptionally, exceptionally, maybe even historically good for a second year quarterback. Cause how many second year guys are top 10 quarterbacks? That's tough, man. Like who we was have an the outlier. last pick in the draft, man? Yeah. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And instead everything has to be framing of, is he overrated or yeah. underrated? So that's where I come down on it. He's playing good football. No, he is not the driving factor behind them being so great, but he's doing his job really really well and this overall team bro it's just disgusting they have a plus 13.4 point differential that's number 20 in a single season since the merger now i mentioned the cowboys are above them but eight of the 18 teams above those two who have finished their season have won the super bowl it's a pretty good track record they are third in rushing yards second in rushing touchdowns fourth in rushing yards per attempt and First in passing yards per attempt, third in passing yards, second in touchdowns. It's just disgusting. And there are top five offense situationally across the board, third down, fourth down, and in the red zone. It is easily to me the most stacked offense in football, even more so than the Dolphins. And those are two teams that have incredible coaching edges as well. But then the difference, of course, on top of that, is that they have the number one scoring defense, their third in turnovers forced, they get pressure, they have elite linebackers, they have an improved secondary. I mean, they're just a juggernaut. And the only thing that can trip them up, to me, is if maybe they do go down a key offensive player. Like that stretch we saw where Debo was hurt, where Trent Williams was hurt, and Brock does start to press, and he has to do a little bit more, and that's when the turnovers can start to pop up. But unless he does have that sort of pressure on him and regresses because of that, it's hard for me to see anybody else winning the Super Bowl this year. It really is. The Niners are that great. Yeah, and I just want to shout out some of the unsung heroes of this Niners team that get lost in the shuffle because we do get caught up. Purdy, McCaffrey, Debo, IU, Kittle. We shout out all these guys. I mean, you shout out Trent Williams. I mean, it's a death sentence, dude. If you don't have a right end that can set the edge against this team, Aaron Banks and Trent Williams are going to take you to church every Mm -hmm. down. McCaffrey's going to – they're not going to need Brock. You know what I mean? Like – so shout out Trent Williams, shout out Aaron Banks, shout out this defense, man. Young, Hargrave, Bosa, Greenlaw, Warner. It's disgusting, dude. The Niners are disgustingly loaded. Do you want to have that discussion as like a, a full show, that weapons discussion, or do you got any teams at the top of your head yeah. right now? I do have some at the top of my head. And I want to ask you about this. Are we just saying skill position talent, or is quarterback included in the discussion? No, I think we got to just look at skill position talent because it's a question of what's around Brock. Yeah, yeah. The first team that I think of, kind of, it's actually ridiculous, 
that we were having these conversations with these these kind of teams. Mm-hmm. First team I think of has to be Greatest Show on Turf. Of course. Um, you know, you've got uh, Falk. You've got uh, Bruce. you got Holt. Next team I think of is the Ofer Colts with yep. Edger and James, with 1,000-yard Stokely, Reggie Wayne, uh, Marvin Harrison, and Dallas Clark. The next team mm-hmm. I think of is... Um, Oh, who did I? I just had him on top of my head, man. Who are there any other ones that uh that, that come to the top of your head? So those are the first two that I had down. The next one on my short list was the '98 Vikings because I that's all. Oh, that's ex- with uh, with Robert Smith, right? Robert exactly. Smith, who was playing at a really really high level at the running back position, and then they had one of the best receiver tandems ever with Chris Carter and Randy Moss. Those were the three who I had mm-hmm. down. I can't think of a group that has ever had. Four studs like this, though. Yeah, buddy. McCaffrey is the best running back in football. Debo is probably the best after-the-catch weapon in football. And Tyreek makes a case, right, because of his blinding speed. But Tyreek also does so much getting open before the catch way downfield. When you consider Debo's speed with his physicality, how he bounces off tackles with his shiftiness, he is something different. Ayuk, unbelievable. Like, borderline all-pro level receiver. George Kittle. I would say a top two tight end in football. It's just inconceivable offensive talent. So I think that this is number one. I really do. I mean, Falk, Bruce, Holt, you've got three unbelievable studs. I think when you look Mm, at the 0-4 Colts, mm, Edge, Marvin, mm. Reggie, you've got three unbelievable studs. Brandon Stokely, I'm sorry, not at the level of any of these Niners dudes we're talking about. (laughs) Dallas Clark wasn't quite himself yet. Who are you thinking? Is there somebody else or do you disagree? Wow. Uh, I just don't know if 04 Colts is tough. I don't know if I can put him over that. And then I was going to say with the 98 Vikings too, it's tough. I just look, Jake Reed only plays 11 games. Jake Reed was in a thousand yard receiver the previous three yeah. seasons to that with Robert Smith. So when you have the three headed monster with Debo, you can Kittle. You also have Reed Moss, Carter and Smith. Yeah. I, I, do, I think you're right, though. though. I, I, I think you're right. I, I don't. The toughest one for me is the 04 Colts because of the depth of their weapons. Top notch weapons. It's got to be the Rams. Wow. I, I didn't think I was going to agree with you on this. I think you're right. I, I yeah. think I would take. That's crazy. I, I'm going to yeah. I'm going to rack my brain after this. I'm going to see if we can. That might be a nice little TikTok to do, man. Offenses that are up there, skill position, talent wise, with the Niners. It's unbelievable. I want to think of somebody better. I can't right now, man. It's hard. And that's the other thing that's going to be annoying about this Purdy conversation is there are people who it feels like are hypercritical, but I also know that if he wins the Super Bowl, I mean, his statistical production is going to be outstanding. And there is a real struggle to attribute credit and fault among sports fans in general. <laughs> <laughs> and we are absolutely going to see that if they win the Super Bowl, which I expect them to, he's going to be Tom freaking Brady. People are going to say he's Brady. People are going to say he's the best quarterback in football. People will look down the camera and say that he is better than Patrick Mahomes, that he is better than Josh Allen, that he's better than Lamar Jackson. Just you wait. And he's not going to be. And you can be really good without that. Like I saw Ben Solak post a video. Great video. Great video. Ben Solak is just the man, dude. He does unbelievable film breakdowns. Him and of course our boy Theo. They're my two favorites oh, out yeah. there. Oh yeah. But it's this play where Purdy makes the right play. He takes a check down, and then Debo makes an unbelievable run after the catch for 30 yards. And Ben Solak's just like, who else gets to do that? It's ridiculous. And I saw one of our friends who's a Niners fan quote tweet it, being like, when have we ever seen hating at this level? And I'm like, that's not hating. It's an observation. You're looking at this from a distorted (laughs) perception. It's an accurate description of what's happening. The game two weeks ago, Purdy had three touchdowns, which were entirely unbelievable plays after the catch. There's just a middle ground here that I hope we can land on. Stephen Rees, another ringer guy, along with Ben Solak, tweeted out this chart. Brock Purdy, if you just took his passes behind the line of scrimmage, would lead the league in yards per attempt. Wow. He's averaging 8.8 yards per attempt on passes behind the line of scrimmage. Wow. Next is Mahomes, I think, at like six. So... There's just an honest conversation to be had where we acknowledge that he's really good and we acknowledge that he's in one of the most privileged offensive situations ever and they are very likely going to win the Super Bowl and he will play a part in that, but that doesn't make him the GOAT. That's my take on Brock Purdy. Bang!